This video was produced in a closed shop environment. Some safety devices or guards may have been removed only for the purpose of clarity in this video. When using this tool or any tool in the shop, always keep safety devices and guards in place and practice safe operation. Hello everybody, my name is Jay Hubblebank and I'm going to show you how to use the vertical drilling fixture, also known as a, a vertical drilling jig, to show you how to make the hole for your cheese slicer, just like you see here. Okay, the things you're going to need is of course a vertical drilling jig, you'll need a good clamp, you'll need the indexing rod, and you'll need one of two different drill bits, and of course you will need your stock. All right, uh, the way this jig is designed, you'll see that there are indexing marks on the face of the jig. And these indexing marks are 90 degrees to the bottom, so you don't have to worry about setting that up. What you do have to make sure is that when you use the jig, this is in alignment with the axis that you're drilling on. Even though once it's installed, it will also be 90 degrees like so, it's not something you have to worry about. Once this is fastened to the table, you have no chance to change it. One of the things that maintenance does is make sure that these tables are proper alignment with the, uh, with the axis of the drill. That is 90 degrees. If it is not, and I'm going to show you how to check it, you must take this, oh, excuse me, let the shop manager know that it's not in alignment, that it's out of whack. They will write up a service ticket and move over to another drill press. Okay, to make sure it's in alignment, you take the indexing pin and put it in the chuck and just snug it up. That's all you can do, just hand tight. Then you're going to take the jig, and if you notice the bottom, the bottom has T-bolts. You're going to find an appropriate slot. And you're going to slide it in. Okay. And what we're going to do at this point is just snug this up. We're not going to go crazy tight. We're just going to snug it up. In this shop, we don't want you to make things tight. We want you to snug it up. We're then going to move the table over. We're going to lower this. And what we do is we look between the face here and the rod, and you'll see no daylight. That will let you know that you're in alignment. Back it out. Okay, so at this point we're ready to drill a hole in our workpiece. So we're going to remove the indexing rod, put it aside. We're going to take our workpiece and we're going to set it into the jig. When you clamp it, you must do a good job clamping it. This is very important. If you do not clamp it adequately, when you pull the drill press up and pull the bit out of the hole, it will actually lift your wood and ruin your hole. So make it good and snug on this, okay? And then you're ready to go. Okay, we're going to take the drill bit and get uh, ready to drill a hole. We have two, size, two style bits here. One is a twist bit. and If you see the point, you'll see it's a, uh, it's a bevel point. And the other kind is a bread point bit. The difference between the two. A conventional twist bit is designed for metal use. It is not designed for wood use. And this, particularly when you drill into end grain of wood, which your board generally is, it has a tendency to wander. The bread point bit is designed for wood, not for metal, and this gives you a much better chance of getting an accurate drill. So at this particular point, we're going to use a bread point bit, and we're going to put it in the chuck. Don't just do one and consider it done. You have three holes here? Use all three, and if you can see, each time the chuck key is turning, which means it did have room to be tightened. All right, so at this point, what we're going to do is make the necessary adjustments. We're going to lower the table slightly to make sure that the drill bit clears the top of the wood. And we're going to start aligning ourselves. And as you will have to release the jig slightly, and you have to get yourself into alignment, and just lower this, and you can see whether the brad point is right on your crosshairs that you already drew. Snug it up. Make sure to snug up the table as well. If you do not, it's very easy to move this table. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to drill. Drill press gets turned on, quarter inch bit. You're going to check the chart on the wall to make sure of the speed you need. And it's telling us a quarter inch bit 
is 1500 RPM for hard maple, or actually for hard wood, and they gave hard maple as an example. We're going to check the dial here and the gauge. And look at the speed, and it says speed 1500, I'm at 1450. Okay, I'm gonna do that again just so it shows you big. I'm gonna pump it up just a little bit, 1450. Okay, next is very important. When you go to drill, don't just grab here and start drilling. If you do, you will run out of runway. You will run out of space. Your arm's gonna to have to be back here. So start out over here so you have a full throw all the way around. So what you do is you lower down the arm till the brad point of the bit is into the wood. Press zero to set it to zero. Now, as you drill, you can look at this dial right here and it'll show you the depth you're drilling. When you reach the depth you need, you can actually back the drill put out and you're done. Okay, the second method is by using the tape that you put on the drill bit to be your depth. And all you're gonna do is just lower the, the drill itself until you've reached that point and then you're done and you back it out. It's your choice, whichever one you select. Okay, you're now ready to drill. Make sure the table is tight. Make sure your clamp is tight. Make sure the index, the uh, fixture is correct. You know your drill bit is tight. You got the speed correct. Turn the drill press on. And what you're going to do this time is you're going to go in a little bit, back it out, go in again, back it out, and you're gonna keep doing this until you reach the depth you want. And at this point, I'm gonna use the tape. And I'm where I want to be. Now I backed it out each time for two purposes. Number one, it helps get the chips out. Number two, it helps the drill bit cool down a little bit. A hot bit, a hot anything, a hot blade, once it starts getting hot, it loses its sharpness and it no longer cuts effectively. So the object is to keep it as cool as possible, back it out, it cools down, and then go in again. All right, at this point we're done. Unclamp your workpiece, put the clamp aside, remove your piece, and as you can see, there is your hole all ready to go. All right, when you're done, you've removed, removed your workpiece, make sure to remove the drill bit. Put the key back, okay? Vacuum everything up, clean it, put the drill bit away, put the fixture back on the table. Make sure that your indexing pin is put back where it belongs as well, and you're done.